Hello everyone, welcome to our 2 p.m. worship service online. My name is Rev, I'm one of the pastors here in Victory. At napakaganda po ng uh, nangyari last August 5 and 6 ano, sa ating uh, campus summit. At nakita naman natin po ang dami pong pumunta ng mga isudyante. And uh, I love the, the ending of the video. Ano. Can, you, can we imagine a generation, no? the next generation, young people were in, they understand the gospel, they live out the gospel. Kaya nga napaka-importante po na we preach the gospel, no? not just to ourselves, not just to to uh, our neighbors, but even to the next generation. And so join me no, as we continue to um, look at our series, our 23-week series, The Gospel Explained, looking at the book of Romans. And last week, um, Pastor Pastor John no, uh, gave uh, a great um, um, preaching, an amazing preaching. If you missed that, uh, please do look it up in our YouTube channel or our FB page. And here's what basically he answered the question that that uh, Paul was asking in Romans six fifteen. What then are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? And Paul said, by no means, no way, because we are no longer slaves to sin. We are slaves to righteousness. We are slaves to God. And uh, amazingly, when Paul goes to Romans 7, he goes back to talking about the law. Diba sabi na niya, we are not under law. Does that mean na ichapuera na yung law? Does that mean na tatalikuran na natin yung law? And apparently not. Because in Romans chapter 7, Paul will... Um, talk more about the law and its relationship to us, its relationship to the gospel, its relationship to our walk of faith. Even Jesus said he, has, he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And so in Romans chapter 7, verse 8, verse 6, Paul writes this, but now we are released from the law. Again, in Romans 6, he said, we are not under the law. In Romans 7, he said, we are released from the law. So ano ba to? Diba? Anong gagawin natin dito sa law ngayon? Uh, anong ga- that when Paul speaks of the law, he, he's talking about the Torah. No? The, 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 the laws that were, were given to Moses and the people of Israel in Mount Sinai when God uh, declared His covenant to Israel, His covenant relationship to Israel. We are released from the law. Having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. And before Paul will talk about serving in the new way of the Spirit in chapter 8, he will talk about the law in chapter 7. What is the law? What does it do to us? Anong relationship? Ano nga yung ibig sabihin ito? That when we serve in the new way of the Spirit, no longer in the way of the written code. Kaya nga sabi ni, ni Jesus, di ba? Um, it is written. Do not commit adultery. But I tell you, if you have looked at a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery. That's the spirit of the law. And we will talk more about that in chapter 8. But now, Paul will first talk about the law. The law. Okay? Relevant pa ba ito sa atin? No? There are six, more than 600, I think 613 laws. No? Ano ang ginagawa nito sa atin? Anong... Kailangan pa ba natin to? May mga bagay tayong hindi na ginagawa sa, sa Old Covenant. Pero the law, the Torah, the commandments, the Ten Commandments. Ano to? Is this still relevant for us? And Paul says in Romans chapter 7, verse 7, What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. If the law... Um, because of the law, the more that our sinful passion is aroused. Because of the law, the more na gusto mong i-break yung law. Naalala nyo ba nung bata pa kayo, the more sinabihan kayo na huwag mong gawin yan, na nasa isip mo, someday, gagawin ko yan. Or, kung talagang medyo matapang-tapang ka na nun, di ba? Talaga, you're, you want to break it. You know why we have that in us? Because we want to be our own gods. Ayaw natin pagsabihan kung ano yung gagawin natin. Gusto natin tayo yung nagke-create ng law. But eto, may law si God. Maliba na nagkaroon pa ng law. Okay, maliba na, sabi ni Paul kasi, um, the law 
um, kind of um, enslaved us. So is the law sin? So let's get one thing clear and let's get one thing straight before we continue. Paul says in Romans chapter 7, verse 12, so the law is holy and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. The law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. Holy, righteous, good. Do you know why the law is holy, righteous, and good? Because the lawgiver, God, is holy, righteous, and good. The law is only as good as the lawgiver. And because the lawgiver is God, holy, righteous, and good, the law is also holy, righteous, and good. The law was never a means to freedom for the, for the Israelites. God set them free first from Egypt, from, the, from slavery. And then when he made his covenant relationship, his covenant promise with Israel, then he gave the law back it so that the law will help them in growing their relationship with God and with each other. That's why the law is good, holy, and righteous but there's something about the law in its relationship to the gospel at yun yung titingnan natin ngayon in Romans 7 verse 7 what then shall we say that the law is sin by no means yet if it had not been for the law I would not have known sin for I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said you shall not covet so before, nung hindi pa sinabi na you shall not covet, meron ka na actually niyan sa, sa, sa sarili mo. May, meron ka ng sinful tendency na yun. Pero nung sinabi na, that mas more na gusto mong mag-covet. Ganun siya. So what is the law in a relationship to the gospel? Ano yung titignan natin ngayon? Diba? Because can the law save us? Kasi kung hindi natin maintindihan to, ang mangyayar sa atin, either we will be full of pride. Naiisipin natin, ah, basta ako, sumusunod ako sa law. Yan. At pag may nakita ka na hindi sumusunod sa law, ay hindi ako katulad niya. No? Pero lahat tayo may mga bini-break na law. We are all law breakers. Ang problema lang sa atin is this. At least yung law na bini-break niya, hindi ko bini-break. Ganun tayo. So, akala natin, mas magaling tayo kesa sa iba. At least ako, every Sunday nag-church. Siya, Hindi. Oh. At least ako, hindi lamang ako nakikinig pag 2 p.m. Sunday. Pati 4 p.m. Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday, and mamaya 6 p.m. Makikinig ka pa ulit ng online worship service. At least ako nagpipray ako 5 hours. A day. Yung mga ganun, so parang magiging full of pride tayo. We'll be prideful. On the other hand, another extreme is this. We will be in despair. Kasi i-compare din natin yung sarili natin sa iba't pat. Siya nagagawa niyan, ako hindi. Ganito kasi ako eh. Ayan. So kailangan maintindihan natin what is the relationship of the law when it comes to the gospel and our lives. Well, first thing is this. that The law is a mirror that shows our sin. The law is a mirror that shows our sin. Why? Because the law is a reflection of God's goodness, righteousness, and holiness. At pag tiningnan natin, yung mirror na yon, hindi yun yung nakikita natin, hindi righteousness, goodness, and holiness. Kasi nakikita natin yung sarili natin at nakikita natin yung sin natin. The law reflects, shows us. That's what the law does. It's a mirror that shows our sin. And ito yung gusto nating gawin. Pag may nakita tayo sa word ni God na angkop para sa atin na sinasabi doon na kailangan mo isurrender to, ihambol yung sarili mo, repent of this, Tumi, bumalik ka sa Panginoon, may ginagawa ka sa buhay mo na kailangan mo idulog yan sa Panginoon. Instead na yun yung gagawin natin, anong gusto nating gawin? Gusto nating to circumvent the law. Yan, lahat tayo mga lawyers. Gusto natin to circumvent the law. Siguro may loophole yung law na to. No, nung ako po ay uh, single pa at uh, krisyano na po, pero meron po akong ungodly, immoral relationship. But I did not want to give it up. Alam mo, nagbabasa po ako ng Bible noon. Pero ano yung gagawin ko? 
baka sakali meron dito na nagsasabing pwede tong ginagawa ko. No? Baka sakali, pag tinignan ko ang buhay ni David, ni Abraham, baka sakali ni Solomon, o di Solomon nga daming ano eh, di ba? So, pwede ba yung i-apply ko sa buhay ko? Dahil marami siyang immorality, pwede na rin ba sa akin yon? Anong ginagawa natin? Para bang tayo nung ay isang bata na pagdating natin sa bahay, ang dungis-dungis natin, tapos sinabi sa atin ng nanay natin, Uy, tingnan mo nga yung sarili mo sa salamin, ang dungis mo. Tapos nung makita natin yung sarili natin sa salamin, ang dungis ko nga, no? anong sasabi natin sa nanay natin? Nay! Palitan natin yung salamin. Pwede ba yon? Hindi. Hindi ang salamin ang may problema. Tayo. Hindi po ang law ang may problema. Yung sin natin. Just because the law is a mirror that shows us our sin because it's a, we cannot reflect God's holiness and goodness and righteousness. It does not mean that the law is bad. It does not mean that the law is sin. Okay? So that's the first thing. The law is a mirror to us. In Romans chapter 7, verse 13, Paul writes, did, did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through what is good. In order that sin might be shown to be sin and through the commandments might become sinful beyond measure. Another thing that the law does, not only does it show us, that there is sin in our lives, but it shows the magnitude, the gravity of that sin. The law then highlights the sinfulness of sin. It makes sin more sinful kasi minsan tayo, dahil tayo yung gumawa, parang okay lang. Pansin niyo sarili niyo. Ayaw niyo ng sinungaling, di ba? Gusto mo ba na kaibigan na sinungaling? Ng empleyadong sinungaling, ng boss na sinungaling? Ayaw mo ng ganun. At pag ikaw pinagsinungaling, pag siya nagsinungaling sa'yo, bad trip na bad trip ka. Di ba? Kailangan ayusin mo yan. There has to be a subsequent uh, justice or punishment. Ika nga. Pero pag ikaw nagsinungaling, okay lang. Pag nahuli ka ng MMDA at nagsinungaling ka, buti na lang, nakalusot. May mga ganun tayong... But when you look at the law, it tells you na, Ang akala mo yung maliit na kasalanan mo, man, malaki pala yun. Grabe pala ang epekto ng kasalanan sa atin. Ano bang kasalanan ni Adam and Eve? Disobedience. Ilan na sa atin na nagdi-disobey? Tingnan mo yung epekto sa atin. Through Adam, sin, death, entered and spread. Because of that one sin, the law highlights that sinfulness of sin. Ang pinapakita sa atin is this. Man, grabe yan. Grabe ang kasalanan. Huwag mong isipin na kaya mo yan. Hindi mo kayang ikontrol yan. Ikaw ang kukontrolin niyan. And Paul continues, For we know the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. Yan ang problema. It's not the law. It's us. It's our sinful flesh. We don't have a problem with a bad law. We have a problem with a sinful me. Yun yung problema. It's the sinful me. Kung may kasama ka sa bahay, tingnan mo siya at sasabihin mo, it's the sinful me. Huwag mo sabihin, it's the sinful you. Lalo na kung asawa mo yan. Hindi ka makakatulog sa kwarto mamaya. Romans 7 verse 15 to 16. So it's the sinful us. It's not the law. The law is good. For I do not understand my own actions. Eto na, eto na yung, yung kinakalabasan ng sinful me. I do not understand my own actions, sabi ni Paul. For I do not do, the, do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. Alam ko na tama ang sinasabi ng law. Huwag kang magsinungaling. Tama ang sinasabi ng law. No? Huwag kang magkumit ng adultery. Tama ang sinasabi ng law. Gusto kong gawin, pero di ko magawa. Bakit nag-agree ka na tama ang sinasabi ng law? Kasi pag yan ang ginawa sa'yo, sasabihin mo na kung mali yung ginawa mo. Kung may asawa ka at nag-adultery siya, ano sasabihin mo? Mali yung ginawa mo. Eh bakit ikaw na lalaki 
or ikaw na babae na may asawa ka na, nakipag-flirt ka pa rin sa iba. Diba? Bakit ganun? Alam mo namang mali. Gusto mong bumait. Gusto kong bumait. Pero di ko magawa. Ito yung relationship ng law sa sinful nature natin. Apart from Christ, kung wala yung grace ni God, eto tayo. Ganun siya. Gusto mong bumait, pero di mo magawa. At anong sinasabi ni Paul dito? Paul is becoming what? Open, accountable, taking responsibility of his actions. Being vulnerable to the church. At anong sinasabi ni Paul? Guys, may struggle din ako. Meron ako mga issues na napagtagumpayan na, pero may issues pa ako ngayon na struggle pa ako. And that's okay. What? Am I saying it's okay to have issues? No, it's okay that we're still struggling. Anong ibig sabihin? Ibig sabihin, ayaw natin sa mga sin na ginagawa natin. Ang masama is, para sa'yo, okay lang. Okay lang yung adultery. Okay lang yung pornography. Okay lang yung homosexuality. Okay lang yung magsinungaling. Okay lang yung maagrabyado. Okay lang yung mag-oppress. Okay lang yung pumatay. Yun ang mali. Kung akala mo okay yan, Kung wala kang struggle within, you know, alam ko mali ito, gusto kong ayo, Man, I pray for you that God, you know, will arrest your heart. And that you will respond by humbling yourself in repentance. Paul understands the struggle of the human person. Tayo, di ba, theologically, doctrinally, alam naman natin yan eh. Alam natin in our minds. Ang ano ang kagustuhan ng Panginoon. Alam natin that you know the grace has come. Alam natin that this is no longer by works. We are saved by grace through faith. Alam natin that if we love Jesus, we will obey his commands. Alam natin 'yon. Pero pag ginawa mo na knowing it here and putting it here are two different things. And Paul knows and understands that there is a struggle within us. And so your struggle, my struggle does not mean that I'm inferior to you. Your struggle does not mean that you're inferior to others. Your struggle does not mean that you're an outcast, that God does not value you. Your struggle does not mean that you are out of fellowship with God. But your struggle, because Paul, when he was telling of his struggle, does not also mean that it is an excuse. Tao lang kasi ako eh. Kaya may struggle ako. Yes. But it does not mean it is an excuse. Amen? Because Paul never used it as an excuse to sin. Since we are no longer under law, should we sin? No way. It is not an excuse. And sabi ni Paul, because there's a struggle in me, so now, it is I no longer, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. In my flesh, if I am going to be a Christian walking with the Lord and still depend in my flesh, still depend on my own ability and power. Guess what? I may have the desire, but I will not have the ability to carry it out. Yan ang warning ni Paul. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep doing. Paul once again agrees with the law that the law is good, but the law cannot give him the ability to obey. The law can tell you, this is the way to go, but it cannot give you the power or the ability to go that way. The law cannot give us the power to overcome sin. That's what Paul is saying. Remember, this is still part, this chapter 7 is still part of that chapter 5 we're in. Through Adam, death, sin entered through Christ, grace, righteousness, justification. Through Adam, death, sin, and condemnation. But because of God's grace, where sin abounds, grace abounds. And so do not offer your, the members of your body 
to sin. Consider yourself dead to sin, alive in Christ. And now he goes to the law because the church in Rome, there are Jews, Gentiles who are actually very familiar with the law, with the Torah. So sinasabi niya to. He's saying this so that we will not, what? Depend on how we keep the law. But depend on how God empowers us. Because the law cannot empower us. Paul wants us to depend on God's power so that when we do obey the law, it's no longer a duty, it is a delight. We obey the law not so that we can overcome sin and what? Go to heaven, but to understand that we obey the law because we have already been given the promise of eternal life by God. The law will tell us what to do. The law will show us what sin is, but it will not give us the power. It cannot save. It cannot make us righteous. Do you honor your parents? Do you read the Bible? Do you go to church? Do you give to share what you have? You're generous. Those things cannot make us righteous. Only the gospel. The life, the death, and the resurrection of Christ. Only the love and the goodness of God. The faithfulness of God through the gospel. That's what makes us righteous. The law will leave us broken. Yan ang sinasabi ni Paul. Because our flesh does not have the ability to fulfill it. But only Jesus did that. So, parang ano yan? MECQ tayo ulit. Tama? Um, five months na ba tayo? Five months na ba to? Yung... No? Almost five months na. Yung iba sa atin, malapit ng maregular. No? Here's the thing. With this virus, this COVID-19, nagkaroon tayo ng mga regulations. Nagkaroon tayo ng mga laws, ika nga, about it. Yung mga laws na yun, the, 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 those laws are good. But those laws cannot get let the virus disappear. It cannot fight the virus. Only a vaccine can cure us from the virus. Kahit anong law yan, mag-mask ka, mag-PPE ka, di ba yung iba sa atin, pupunta lang ng SNR, naka-PPE, ganun, di ba? Pero, kahit ano pa yung gagawin mo, sumunod ka man sa law na yun, yung virus nandyan pa rin. At pag tinamaan ka ng virus, kahit anong sunod mo sa law, di ba? Hindi niya kayang sagupain or a cure, bigyan ng solusyon yung virus sa'yo. Eh, guess what? Meron tayong so-called virus lahat sa atin. Anong tawag doon? Kasalanan. And the law is powerless to save us from sin. So what does Paul continue to say? He says, I delight in the law of God. In my inner being. Gusto ko. Gusto ko ang bumait. But I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Gusto kong bumait, pero di ko magawa. Paul continues to affirm that the law is good. The law is not the problem. The problem is sinful us. Our sin. Paul understands that. Kaya, nung sinabi niya to, he also understands that pwede natin tong gawing excuse Dahil, you know, ganito ako eh. Sinful ako eh. So, mag, oh, gawin ko na lang. No? Hindi ko mapaglabanan eh. So, gawin ko na lang. Hindi talaga eh. So, we, either we, we're in despair or because we, we, you know, nagagawa natin yung ibang part ng law, yung mga hindi nakakagawa nun, we look down on them. That is not the case. Paul said this, wretched man that I am. This is my responsibility. I'm accountable to this. I have struggles, yes. But they are not an excuse to give up. May struggle ka ba ngayon? 
Nagsistruggle ka pa rin ba? Addict ka pa rin ba? Sugar roll ka pa rin ba? May babae ka pa, ka pa rin ba kahit may asawa ka na? Or may lalaki ka pa kahit may asawa ka na? Nagsisinungaling ka pa rin ba? Struggle pa rin ba sa'yo? Just because it's real in your life, it doesn't mean you're going to give up. God has given us hope. Sabi ni Paul, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Hindi tinanong ni Paul, what will deliver me? Kasi minsan, ganun tayo eh. Alam mo yun, um, may mga, ano tayo, may mga bagay na, na tingin natin makakatulong sa atin. No, Paul, Paul does not blame the shift, does not, uh, blame the shift, shift the blame. <laughs> Paul does not shift the blame. Paul does not uh, say that it's society's fault, it's the government's fault, it's uh, the church's fault. No, no. He's saying, this is my responsibility, but he also understands there's hope because he knows that there is deliverance. But the deliverance is not based on a what. No, the, the church cannot deliver you. Your, your religion cannot deliver you. Your church affinity cannot deliver you. Pleasing personality and good looks cannot deliver you. Your power and position cannot deliver you. Your possessions and your finances, your career, your influence cannot deliver you from this sin. It cannot. Your friends, your family, your family name, your good works, none of this can deliver you. Because the law will point us to our need for a Savior. Alam ni Paul, wretched man that I am, who will de- The law is here, but the law cannot deliver me. Who? What? It's not a what, it's who. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is only one that can deliver you. May struggle ka ba ngayon? Hanggang ngayon? No, grabe. Nalulungkot pa ako pag may mga naririnig ako sa mga mag-asawa na man, there's unfaithfulness. Oh, na, hindi, lang, hindi lang po nakakalungkot yun. Hindi lang po nakakainis. It's, there's, there's something in me that when I hear that, I am just, Lord, parang bakit ganito? Bakit? Why do we still keep on doing this? And we think we can, what, get away with it? No, meron talagang mga ganun. Eh, yung, yung hindi sila faithful sa asawa nila and they think they can get away with it. But meron ding mga hindi faithful and they want to stop. And I want you to understand, Jesus is your Savior. What are you struggling with? Jesus is your only Savior. Because what you're struggling with, whether that's pornography, Stealing, sugal, yabang, murder, homosexuality, anuman yun, no? That's just an outside manifestation of an inner problem. At maari kang lagyan ng tracker ng asawa mo, maari yung TV mo, yung, yung, uh, ano to, yung, yung computer niyo nasa labas ng ng nasa living room para hindi ka makapag-pornography guess what kung nasa loob mo yan hahanap at hahanap ka ng paraan alam mo yan sugal hahanap at hahanap ka ng paraan bakit because ano man ang ilagay na law outside you is powerless to save you and to change you only Jesus. Only the gospel. So Paul goes back to Christ, not religion. Paul goes back to grace and freedom. And that's what I want us to understand today. Ano man ang struggle mo ngayon, wag mong isipin, no? Na, ayan, wala na akong pag-asa, hindi na ako mahal ni God. Jesus came for you. Died for you. And you can trust Him. He rose again from the dead. Ano yung nakaraan mo na tingin mo hanggang ngayon? You are what? Defined by that? Jesus is your only Savior.
Kung inisip mo na pag kumita lang ako ng maraming pera. Kung inisip mo na pag nagkaroon ako ng posisyon na ganito, no, Jesus is your only Savior. Kung inisip mo na pag pumunta lang ako sa church, be, you know, do what my religion tells me, no, Jesus is your only Savior. And I want to let us fix our eyes on that. So that next week when we talk about the the work of the Spirit, walking in faith, we understand this. Because Jesus is my only Savior. He is the only one who can empower me. He is the only one who can get me through this relationship with Him. He will grow me, change me, transform me. And not only that, He will make my life a blessing so that others will know Jesus is our only Savior. Amen? Let us pray. Lord, pinagdarasal ko, Panginoon, kaming lahat may mga kanya-kanya kaming struggles. And minsan yung mga struggles na yun can be a, an avenue of condemnation and living in guilt. And God, we thank you that because Jesus died for us and we are cleansed from all unrighteousness and we are set free from sin, We do not have to live a life of sin. God, yung mga struggle na yon, mapagtatagumpayan namin. At pag nagpatagumpayan namin yon, we will see that there are other struggles, but we have hope. Ano man ang struggle namin na darating sa buhay, mapagtatagumpayan dahil sa aming Panginoong Diyos. At yung iba man namin mga kasamahan ngayon, kung ikaw, you have a struggle with pornography, you have been unfaithful to your spouse, or you're, Alam mo yan, sadyang you have a magalitin ka lang na tao. Or maybe, sinungaling ka lang talaga. Yung ganun yung mga struggles mo. I want us to take this time to surrender it to God, whatever that may be. Maybe you've killed someone. You are not beyond redemption. Maybe you're having a, a lifestyle of homosexuality. And you know that does not please God. God still loves you and God wants to save you. Lord, we thank you, God, that today, Lord, amin pong ibinudulog sa'yo, we surrender it to you. The righteous, holy, and good God. Tong mga sin, Panginoon, sa buhay namin that we know is hindering us, robbing us the joy of fully knowing, of fully giving ourselves to you. Robbing us the joy, Lord God, of having a great relationship with the people who love us, people who na mahal namin, Panginoon. Lord, we thank you that Jesus is our Savior. We will trust in Christ. We will trust in the gospel. And God, we also know that we cannot do this alone. And so I pray that just like Paul, we will be open. We will be vulnerable with others, Lord God or to others, to someone who will be accountable, Lord, to your, to your people, to other Christians, Lord God, who will help us walk this faith and see our lives from glory to glory, from victory to victory, so that people who will look at us, who knows us, God, they will, mag din sila, if that happened to you, it can happen to me. Sabihin mo naman sa akin, Ano yung solution? What delivered you? And we will tell them, it's not a what, it is a who. Jesus is our only Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Stay safe. Keep praying. Do good. See you next Sunday.